All right, so this is one of the uh, white birch, paper birch uh, logs we're using for our Icelandic uh, warp-weighted loom. Um, this is going to form one of the, uh, the uprights um, that holds the, uh, the actual beam and the whole assembly together. And um, I'm proceeding to, to get this ready uh, as much as possible using period tools. Um, and so what I've done here is I've got the, uh, the beam laid up on these two sawhorses, essentially on its back surface. This will be the side closer to the wall. And I'm going to proceed to, to take the uh, birch bark off. So uh, the process here is to, to do a, a straight cut down the center of the back. In theory, these are all lining up and making one long straight line. All right. And uh, once you've actually got that scored down the full length of the log, then what I can do is, uh, this axe is fairly sharp. I can get in here and I can start peeling the bark away. Now, I have hopes of trying to get larger slices of the bark off that we might be able to use for other purposes. So you can see I can cut it and start to peel it away and then pull it off in these long slices. So you can see that I'm, I'm kind of wedging, scooping with the side of the axe. And then ideally what it'll do is it'll give these fairly large pieces that uh, hopefully we can have some other purpose for. And then uh, I'm just saving them all in a basket there just to make it easier to keep the work area neat. So my first step is to go down the whole length of the log, working from both sides and uh, pull that bark off. Now this is not the ideal way to harvest birch bark, but uh, because uh, I've got these green logs, I want to remove all the uh, exterior bark from anyways. Uh, at the very least, this material is uh, good as a fire starter. All right, that's the first step. So I focused in fairly closely here, so you can see the structure of the tree itself. Um, on the outside are a, a number of layers of the actual uh, paper-like bark, and that material is actually dead. But you uh, notice how the color changes when you get in underneath the loose paper layers. And the very bottommost layer, you can see, is quite solidly attached, and underneath that is a green layer. This is actually the growth layer for the tree. and. Um, if we were trying to harvest uh, bark out in the, in the woods, we would uh, want to be most careful not to damage that because uh, cutting this will actually kill the tree. But in this case, I want to get down to the bare wood. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the, uh, the axe in a scalloping motion. And you can see that what we've got underneath the green is a layer of brownish material. If I'm pretty careful and just scrape that green off there. See that? Now what I want to actually do is I want to get down to the bare wood underneath. So because these logs are green, and if my tool is sharp, you can see I can use it like a big scraper. And it actually goes relatively quick. So in that time, I've done a, a section all about 30 centimeters long and about a quarter of the diameter around the, the edge of the tree. And you can see that works up fairly quick. That little white spot there, that's the spot where I've actually cut the wood slightly. But again, because it's green and the axe is sharp, I can just shear that away. And that'll leave me with the clear white wood underneath, ready for my next step. All right, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be working to cutting off these axe cut edges and creating a flush end on the end of this fairly heavy piece of log, which is going to serve as the top beam for the loom. So what I'll be using is using my axe and a maul. And my first step is to lay down a relatively straight line around the edge where I want my cut to lay. If there's a tricky bit to this, it's trying to get the two edges of the, uh, the cut to line up. 
as I'm doing this, I'm trying to keep the axe running at 90 degrees to the direction of the water. There's going to be any unevenness in the two sides of the cut laying up. You see they're off a little bit here. This is the best time to correct that with your initial score line. Now that's the first step. I've got a score line all the way around. So I've zoomed in for a close-up here so you can see how the next part of this works. What I'm going to do is do a series of diagonal cuts that run back to the scored line. And I want to make sure that when I do that, I've already laid down my straight line. So that ideally those pieces will just lift off. And I can maintain the straight side of the cut with the axe at 90 degrees to the log. And I found it better to score and then move. So that way I'll know where that line is when I get to the next spot. So you just push the accent sideways. And then cut straight down. Now this is tedious, but with a little bit of care, I'll actually be able to create a relatively smooth, flat surface by the time I've cut all the way down into the log. So you can see this is the opposite set, side of the log where the cut has been completed. And you can see that that's relatively smooth and crisp. Remember that there's no large saws for the Viking Age. All this work would have to be done with axes.